Okay, guys. So in the last class, um, we have been discussing the mean square displacement relations for uh, another T chain model, which we called as the worm-like chain. or the kritke porod model and the description went something like this. So, we have a polymer chain, I define a contour variable s that goes from 0 to L c, where L c is my contour length. I am interested in finding the end to end displacement vector R e, R e I can write in terms of the position vector R which is now a function of x s along the contour. So, this is equal to R L c minus R of 0 and uh, what we said is if I take a limit b going to 0, I can talk of segment vectors or bond vectors as the tangent to this particular graph and based on that what we derived was the mean square end to end distance was 2 L p square L c by L p minus 1 plus e to the power minus L c by L p, where L p is what we refer as the persistence length that characterizes the stiffness of the polymer chain. So, now what we will do, we will take two extremes, one in which the persistence length L p is very high and another case when this L p is very small. Okay. So, just to recall briefly, the correlation of the tangent vector went like exponential of minus s minus s prime by L p. So, in that sense, the magnitude of L p characterizes the amount of correlation that uh, we have in the system. So, let us take a limit when we have L p that is much higher than L c, that means my persistence length is much higher than the contour length uh, and in that case what we can do is we can of course see that in this case my L c by L p become very small. So, I can do a Taylor expansion of the exponential term here because the argument of exponential is a very small number and what do we get is exponential of minus L c by L p as something like 1 minus L c by L p plus L c square by 2 L p square minus L c cube by 6 L p cube just using the formula that for a small x e to the power minus x goes like 1 minus x plus x square by 2 minus x cube by 3 factorial or 6 and so on. Okay. So, if I now put this expression in the previous expression what do I get is my R e square goes like 2 L p square L c by L p, this is an approximation minus 1 plus 1 minus L c by L p plus L c square by 2 L p square minus L c cube by 6 L p cube. So, there are of course, cancellations and what we end up getting is something like L c square multiplied by 1 minus L c by 
3 lp and so on okay and now you can see if my lc by lp is really very small that is when say persistent length is almost like infinity what do we have is in the limit lp is going to infinity then this term the second term also drops down and what do i get is my r e square goes like l c square and what it essentially means is my n to n distance become equal to the contour length and what it means is what the chain is actually like a rod because only in that case the contour length will be same as the end to end uh, distance okay this is what we refer as the rod like limit and that is obtained when lp is much smaller than much higher than lc okay now look at the opposite extreme when the lp is very small and let's see like what happens in that case so again we will reproduce the formula here so the mean square n to n distance is 2 multiplied by lp square lc by lp minus 1 plus e to the power minus lc by lp and now let us say I look at the extreme. So, earlier case we looked at when L p is much higher than L c. Now, we look at when L p is much lesser than L c. Okay. So, that means L c by L p is much higher than 1. So, in this case you can see I can really drop the exponential term because the power to the exponential is a negative number and that is very small very high. So, this will drop and what we will have is r e square is approximately equal to 2 l p square multiplied by l c by l p minus 1. Now, since l c by l p is much higher than 1, we can also drop this particular term and then we have 2 l p l c. Okay. Now, try to recall uh, the relationship that we derived for a flexible chain. What we had was r e square is equal to n b square for the models we derived for flexible chain and look at like what the L c will be equal to. So, of course, provided that we use many many segments to represent the polymer chain actually in the limit when b goes to 0, what essentially we have is L c will be equal to n multiplied by b that is the number of segments multiplied by b that will be true when the b value is taken to be very very small. Okay. So, if I compare now this expression with that expression you can see that l c is analogous to my n b there. So, this term must be analogous to my b and for that reason we say b is equal to 2 l p or l p is equal to 1 by 2 b which is something that we um, discussed earlier that the persistent length must be equal to half of the cone length. Okay. So, in this particular limit we can say the chain is flexible okay. and now we have already discussed a uh, couple of cases where the chain has to be stiff. The first case we said was if we have a delocalization of valence electrons in that case chain is stiff. If we have a bulky side group in that case a chain is stiff. 
uh, if we have a strong polyelectrolyte where there is coulomb repulsion between the segments of chain and the coulomb repulsion is very strong in that case we have stiff things if we have for example hydrogen bonding between segments like the case of a dna molecule uh, in that case the chain is stiff but even otherwise even if i look at a particular polymer chemistry and if i look at say small chains containing lesser number of carbons they have to be more stiff compared to the chain containing more number of carbon for the simple reason that I will require more segments to represent the chain or the number of conformations will increase if I increase the number of carbons. Actually uh, in the uh, lectures in the beginning I said the number of conformations roughly goes like 3 to the power m where m is the number of repeat units. So, using that idea what you can think of is smaller chains containing fewer carbons or oligomers will be always more stiff compared to larger chains or the actual polymers. Okay. So, in most systems for the same polymer chemistry if I change the number of repeat units and I look at my R e square what you will get is in the very beginning my R e square will go like n square. Okay. So, let me draw it slightly nicely just because I just said that the mean square displacement is mean square n to n distance is going like L c square and L c is increasing as n is increasing. So, my R e square will go like n square, but after that we recover the behavior R e square going to n for longer chains. Okay. And this has been observed in many polymer chemistries that for smaller values of n we do see a rod like behavior and then it transitions to a flexible behavior for, uh, for longer chains. And the kretke porod model is very helpful to look at how the transition takes place from that regime to this regime. The models we derived earlier are only applicable to this regime. We can assume the chain to be rod like somewhere here for the intermediate regions when the chain is between the rod like and flexible regime the Kretke porod model become particularly particularly useful. Okay. So, I want to now hint at like some ways of looking at the end to end uh, distance in actual experiment or in a simulation. So, uh, in an experiment of course, you do some kind of an scattering and get the mean size of a chain uh, and from there you want to calculate the the end to end distance actually what turns out and what we will show in the uh, in the next week lectures that uh, the quantity to measure is not the in end to end distance, but what is known as a radius of gyration that is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is I try to do some kind of a simulation that incorporates the detailed chemistry into it. Okay. And uh, one thing that is becoming more used in the polymer literature is what is known as atomistic simulations. Where I can really represent the polymer chain not by a toy model, but by the complete chemistry uh, that we can incorporate. That means, I will represent the polymer chain as composed of all its atoms. So, for example, this is my polyethylene molecule the limitation though is uh, all these simulations uh, will not really work if the number of carbons become very high just because the system size become huge. Think of it like I am not only looking at the polymer chain in isolation the polymer chain must be in a solvent 
and in that case we also need to model the solvents which are present around it and it turns out that by the com current computational resources I can only model like chains of say 20 or 30 or 50 carbons not beyond it. Okay. So, in the regime where the chain is rod like or going towards flexible behavior. So, in this particular regime when R e square is going like n square in that particular regime I can also do atomistic simulations, but it will not go like very high until there. Okay. If I work with like twi models then in that case I am right here. which are the twi models for the random walk and if I am doing like a Kretke porod then I am capturing this entire regime, but that is still remains to be a twi model. right? So, what we can do is we can validate or find out some of the parameters of Kretke porod model also by using the simulations. If we are able to get this particular cross over where the chain goes from a rod like regime to a flexible regime and uh, this remains I would say a challenge uh, in the polymer simulations, but it is now possible for certain polymer chemistries. Okay. The other point here is uh, apart from the polymer chemistry what also is important is the environment of the polymer chain. So, a polymer chain can have different mean square end to end distance if I put the same chain in different solvents. So, the amount of stretching the amount of uh, uh, stretching or the amount of uh, swelling of a polymer chain would depend on what solvent it is present in whether it is favorable to the polymer whether the it is uh, the polymer dissolves in that solvent uh, whether the polymer likes that solvent and so on uh, or whether the polymer hates that solvent. Uh, and uh, that is like one factor that one has to consider. The other factor is the effect of temperature. So, the same polymer chain can show different behavior at different temperatures. So, it can be for example, more stretched at a certain temperature and if I go to for example, a higher temperature it can become collapsed or vice versa it can be stretched at uh, a lower temperature at higher at a higher temperature and becomes uh, collapsed at a lower temperature and so on. Okay. So, these effects are some things that we have not so far considered in the toy model and for this reason we are limited to the scaling behaviors that are either in the ideal chain limit or in the rod like limit and uh, later on in the class I will tell you when does we deviate from this particular scaling laws and uh, how to address that uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the models that we have uh, we have discussed. Okay. So, the other thing I want to remind you is so far we only looked at the short range correlations along the contour but there can also be like long range correlations. For example, these two points are very far if I look at their distance along the contour, but they are physically very close okay. and there is something called an excluded volume interaction that comes into play when two segments of polymer chain irrespective of their distance along the contour come together. And it turns out that these interactions depend on the solvent and the temperature and uh, if I try to include them into the model I will have deviations from the ideal chain behavior. This has been observed experimentally as well for many polymer cases and we will discuss that uh, in the coming lectures. So, with that I stop here, uh, thank you.